Hey there, Aries. Welcome to Divine Conversations. Welcome to January of 2022. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. I hope this reading finds you well. Happy New Year to you. Um, I hope that the new year is setting off in a good way for you, although I kind of feel like it already is, even though there are some pretty challenging things that are going to be happening over the month, especially for you, Aries. We're going to get into that. Um, but already, Aries, just feeling through the energy for you right now, um, it feels good. At least it feels like you feel good. You look good is what I'm hearing. The future is looking good for you. I feel like you're in like you're in like the pole position right now, which actually is definitely connected to a lot of the things that I have channeled for you for this month. Um, so we're, we're going to get into it, but welcome to Divine Conversations. If you're new here, hi, my name is Eric. Thank you so much for tuning in. I encourage you guys to stick around and hang out, watch the whole reading, see what resonates for you. Um, I do, if you are new to me, you do need to know that I will be talking about the astrology here, but when I talk about astrology for the month, I'm talking about it from the sidereal point of view, okay? not mainstream or tropical. So if you're unfamiliar with that, or if you're new to sidereal astrology, I highly encourage you to stick around. Just listen, see how it vibes with you, compare it to what you understand about yourself through mainstream astrology. And if you're interested, I encourage you to stick around throughout the year um, and really work on comparing and contrasting and seeing which really resonates with you more or not. Um, and if you're new to sidereal astrology, you've never had your sidereal chart drawn up, which does have a few differences. Num number one, Ophiuchus is involved, but also number two, the placements often change. So if you're new to sidereal astrology, you've never had seen your sidereal astrology a chart and you're interested, you're intrigued, hit me up. All of my information can be found in the description box below. Just send me an email and let me know that you're interested and I'll get you all set up. Also, with that said, I am available for private readings, so you can book out those with me by emailing me. Again, information all in the description box below. Um, also, if you're interested in getting some extra content with me throughout the month, check us out on Patreon, especially if you're interested in donating to the channel or helping to support the channel. That is a major way to keep this channel going, and I'm greatly appreciative of all of the people that are part of the family there. Check it out. I do daily readings often, um, it, you know, depending on my workload, like I'm, I'm focusing on the monthly readings this week, so I'm probably not going to be doing as many daily readings over there on Patreon, but when the flow is there, I'm there. Yeah. And also you get preferential treatment over on Patreon. Uh, you get uh, the opportunity to engage in the process of developing and sustaining divine conversations. I do often reach out to the collective there and say, Hey guys, what do you think about this? Let's do this. Let's add this. Let's take this away. This, that, and the third. It all depends on you guys. You guys get a big say, especially if you're over on Patreon. Yeah. All right, cool. Um, let's, that's out of the way. Let's get into the energies here. Uh, I'm going to start by speaking to Aries rising. Okay. Because I'm going to look into the chart. Um, and, as far as the placements of the planets and where the, and the houses and everything, that's really only going to be the most relevant for Aries rising. However, it, it doesn't have to be strictly that way. This could still resonate for you. Okay. So that's going to be the first half. We're going to talk to Aries rising first, and then we're going to go on and get just general pulls. Okay. And once we move into the general card pull, that's for anybody any system, whatnot, whatever, sun, moon, rising, Venus, especially also if you're a cross watcher. All right. So let's get into this. Starting with Aries rising. <clears throat> it could be a challenging month for you. Um, there is a big focus for you, Aries, for the month of January. Uh, your energies are very much focused within the ninth, the 10th houses mainly, but also the eighth house is associated or is wrapped up in for you a little bit. Um, and the title for you for this month, Aries, while I was channeling your energies, oh, by the way, there's some work going on in the background. Hopefully you won't be able to hear too much of that, but we're going to keep going. The title that I got for you in channeling your energy this month, Aries, is could there be more? A lot of your energy or a lot of the energetic focus for you this month is concentrated within your ninth and 10th houses, like I said already, with the eighth house also being wrapped up in this a little bit. 
The ninth house is ruled by Sagittarius. That's a very expansive energy. And this month we do have Venus making her retrograde transit and that's happening through Sagittarius. Okay. So there's, there's a lot of reworking of values for the collective right now. Um, a lot, uh, but also for you, Aries, I feel specifically that this has to do with career also because of the energy that's, a, uh, that is, or what's going on within your 10th house. I, I, in, in channeling this, this message for you this month, Aries, I really feel like your career, your finances, but specifically your career or just your public image, 10th, all 10th house energies. I feel like this is a main focus for you this month. And I feel like with what's going on with Venus having or going wet, retrograde during this time, um, and there's a sort of reshaping of values and uh, reshaping of interpersonal or maybe just romantic relationships, reshaping of the realities there, I feel like you are questioning, especially if this is around your career, you are questioning or at least have been questioning whether or not there could be more something of greater value to you for some of you i feel like you found yourself in an energy right now of like looking at what you have in front of you especially if this is your career looking at you what you have in front of you and being like this is it this is what i've been working so hard for this pales in comparison to what it is I'm dreaming of, what it is I truly want, or at least the position that I truly want, how I really want to be seen by the collective and the people around me. Now, with that said, there could be, this This probably is a topic of contention for you because there's a lot here and a lot of energies here for you, Aries, that I... I was looking into and I was picking up on, I was like, ooh, this could be a fight. Now, especially since, you know, well, especially since we have a conjunction between the sun and Pluto, we also have a new moon, I'm sorry, of the full moon, the day after that conjunction with, uh, between the sun and Pluto. And then also we have Mercury going retrograde this month. And for you specifically, Aries, Mercury is retrograde through your, or at least is starting its retrograde motion in your 10th house and is moving backwards into your ninth house. So this is kind of like a reset energy. This is a reprogramming opportunity. Um, if there is anything that you find in your career and even in your finances, because, you know, the 10th house does represent career and that can, and obviously that trickles into your finances. But if there's anything that you find that you are dissatisfied with in terms of your career or in terms of your public image, because the 10th house does rule how the community or society views you, again, your public image, if there is anything about that that you are dissatisfied with, you have the opportunity to change that or at least get those gears in motion in order to change it moving forward however long that will take for you, but whatever. Uh, time is not really important here. Uh, but what is important is the fact that you have the opportunity to change that. But what's really, really super important, Aries, for you during this time, Aries rising, is you have to be very careful. Be, and this is one of the things that I wrote down. Mercury is retrograde through your 10th house. We're going to look at the chart in a second, but Mercury is retrograde through your 10th house this month. Uh, moving from the 10th house into the 9th house. Be very careful of situations like fights or arguments at work or in settings that could negatively affect your career and or social standing. There is even an energy of, I don't give a flying F what, who, or what so-and-so thinks about me, this, that, and the third. I'm going to pop off. Be careful. Okay, Mercury going retrograde is enough of a reason for someone to be careful how they what they say and how they say it. But then on top of that, you have this conjunction between the sun and Pluto that is infusing a sense of an insane amount of power into our souls at this time. All right. So if Mercury going retrograde wasn't enough for you to pop off or say some things that you're going to later regret, the infusion of power, okay, between the conjunction between Sun and Pluto can only accentuate that. Now, it doesn't have to be all bad. You could, if you're very, con if you're conscious enough, or at least if you try to be conscious enough, you could really harness that power to make some great changes. But don't allow that infusion of power to blow your ego out of proportion. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, we're going to talk about that. All right, I do want to talk about also what Mars is doing for you because obviously Mars is your ruling planet. Mars is having a heavy effect on all of us right now, but specifically for you, 
Aries, with Mars being your ruling planet, this is uh, probably really super affecting you. But I want to get into the chart for that. So let's do that. What you see in front of you here is the chart for an Aries rising for the month of January 2022. Uh, this is, this, the date on this chart is January 4th. So today is the 4th of January. This is the day that this reading is being recorded. Okay, and so as of today, January 4th, uh, we have already had the new moon. Uh, every month, just about every month this year is going to be starting with a new moon, which is really kind of awesome because damn near every month we have an opportunity in the very beginning of the month, we have an opportunity to set new intentions and plant new seeds to with intentions for those to come to fruition by the full moon or later off in the future whenever they're ready, okay? So that's a good thing. So as of today, January 4th, we have already had this uh, new moon. And even if you're watching, like, watching this now and moving forward about up until like the, I guess the half moon in between the new and the full moon, you still have an opportunity to tap into, to harness the energies of, um, of the new moon. Okay. So you still have time to plant your seeds and set your intentions and spirit is really wanting me to remind the collective that even though technically the full the new moon has passed you, your intention is really the most important thing here yes you can work through the moon cycles and the planetary cycles and all that and that will give a boost a boon to whatever it is you're trying to work or manifest but really the most important thing is your intention so just keep that in mind you still have an opportunity to get that into place for yourself uh, spirit is guiding me to pick up some cards. Okay, so um, what do I want to say? Let's start. Well, let's just start by looking at what we have for you. Now, you Aries are, are another individual that is probably Aries rising. That's probably experiencing a strong amount of change and reformation in your personal sense of identity because Uranus here has been in Aries, which Number one is your rising sign is also the ruler of your first house naturally, but also Aries is in your first house for you. So, okay, that's that's makes it a little bit stronger. Uranus has been retrograde through Aries since August of last year, 2021. So you may have been really experiencing a change or a redefinition of your personal identity, which I feel like, especially since Uranus is going to be moving direct later this month i think by the 18th of, of january 2022 there is a there is a level of certain things that you have been working on reshaping in terms of your personal identity and your personal alignment that are coming to a head i feel like you're reaching a point now aries where see this is uranus right here in your first house um this is getting to i i just feel like whatever it is you're changing or reforming is coming to a head okay it's it, that that process that situation is coming to a close and by the time uranus moves or stations direct by the 18th i believe the new process will be well set in place and you'll be able to move forward from there now uh let's look at this this is your ninth and tenth house and you see you have all of this energy concentrated in your ninth and tenth house this is this is a thing for everybody right now not necessarily in the ninth or tenth house more so in a lot of the most of the energies of the planets being concentrated in in about three houses for us this month and for the foreseeable future but um your concentration of this is the ninth and the tenth house and as you can see here you have saturn in your tenth house at home in your tenth house in capricorn jupiter is in aquarius right now that's also in your tenth house but then you also have mercury here here's pluto in your ninth house venus and then the sun and venus is moving retrograde right now she's going to be moving backwards back into your eighth house where she meets up with mars and continues her forward movement where they make their final conjunction together with pluto okay that's a big thing for the collective but what's most important this month aries the real focal point energetically i feel like is the conjunction between the sun and pluto which happens every year okay the sun moves out through the zodiac every year conjuncts with everything at least once throughout the year so it's not like the conjunction between the sun and pluto is really all that major seeing as how it's an annual thing but given all of the other aspects that are going on here this month this actually is a really powerful time because 
let's see, let's move forward. The conjunction between the sun and Pluto happens on the 16th here, as you can see, both at 28 degrees of Sagittarius. And then the very next day is the full moon, as you can see, okay? So here's the full moon, here's the new, uh, uh, here's the full moon, and it's like, one, and the sun is now like one degree away from Capricorn, from not Capricorn, from Pluto. So there, there is still some strength and some energy in this conjunction. And this, uh, some of you may want to watch the, the Scorpio reading, um, because uh, the Scorpio reading, which is titled "If If You Don't Completely Lose Your Mind This Month," I would be very impressed. But that's for Scorpio. But but you might want to watch the Scorpio reading because that gives a lot of information into how dynamic this conjunction between the sun and Pluto followed by the very next day, followed by a full moon, which is full of power. There is so much power, so much, such an infusion of power within us from the, in the realm of our soul, of our, our, our spiritual identity. Okay. The, the core of who we are as individuals. Now, Aries, this could be a little dangerous for you just because, you know, Aries can be a little hot headed. All right. But then on top of that, Mercury is retrograde at this time. And as you can see, Mercury is in your 10th house, moving retrograde backwards back into your ninth house. And when Mercury goes retrograde, you guys, this is a time for us to rework the programming, to rewrite the code the software that is that has been downloaded into the hardware of our brains right the our, i like to say i like to look at our brains and our minds as a computer system the brain is the hardware the physical app, the physical apparatus the mind uh, runs the software or the programming right and you can you can reprogram yourself so whenever mercury goes retrograde we could see this as instead of looking at it as a dangerous time we could see it as a time to rewrite that programming we can really see any retrograde as a time to rewrite that programming case in point venus is retrograde right now this is a great time for you to rewrite the programming in terms of how you associate with other people your interpersonal relationships what it is you value romance uh your your uh your um your alignment with uh money and 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 finances all that stuff especially with the 10th house focus for you this month okay now there is another reason as to why this could be seriously problematic for you aries and that's because of what is going on with mars at this time for you so let's go back to today at least so january 4th oops January 4th. As of January 4th, or today, Mars, your ruling planet, has entered into Ophiuchus. Mars has been making a transit through Scorpio, digging up, well, in your eighth house specifically, Aries, okay? So Mars has been digging up a lot of, a lot of information, past circumstances or whatever, or whatever, or maybe even bringing into a fo in fo into focus the alignment of your masculine energy, your drive, your focus, your way forward, how it is you pursue something, okay? And that's influencing a lot of change, especially with Uranus being retrograde through Aries at this time, which is ruled by Mars, right? And for you, again, this is happening in your first house, Aries. So again, this is all about your personal identity, really, what's going on with Mars. So as Mars was moving through the through your eighth house or moving through Scorpio, a lot of deep excavation has been happening. And I feel like especially with Venus being retrograde in your ninth house in Sagittarius, the house of philosophy, expansion, um, travel, uh, foreign places, foreign lands, you know, and, and um, exploring new ideas and adventure and doing new things, trying new things, learning about new things of a much higher value of maybe even a spiritual value, okay? Some of you may really be getting much more connected to the depths of your soul and who you are as a spiritual being incarnated in this lifetime. So with that said, now that Mars is moving into Ophiuchus, which is a sign of healing, I feel like there is a strong energy here, Aries, of you taking serious action in order to um, 
right the wrongs in order to clear up or clean up or change the discrepancies that you find in your process. Uh, for some of you this month, I was picking up on an energy of disgust. Now remember, your to the title of your reading here, Aries, is could there be more, right? And with Mars in moving through your eighth house, now getting into open because this could bring some revolutionary energy. Uh-huh. And look, and the card that's just come out for you here, Aries, is the Ten of Swords. Let me let me change the scene here because I want to get into some cards now. So as I talk through what's going on with this, I'm going to get some cards pulled for you. And the first card is the Ten of Swords. There is an ending that needs to happen here. And Aries, I feel like you're starkly aware of it at this time. And that's why things can really get hot and heavy. And that's why I feel like some of you are kind of like, I don't care what so-and-so thinks or who these people are or what they think of me, blah, 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 blah. Something about this in my life isn't right. And I'm going to do what it is that I need to do. I'm going to take the action to fix it, to heal it, to, to uh, amend it, right? But be careful, Aries, because there are feelings of disgust here for some of you. It's like this could be related to an end of a shift in a career or an end or an end or a shift in your relationships. I am hearing marriage. There is something that really needs to end here, Ten of Swords. And I, I, you're either really pissed off about it, which I understand, or you're just so driven, like you could be really tapping into this Sagittarius energy, which is such a fast moving energy, right? You could just feel so driven, so motivated to change these things that there may be a level of insensity, insensitivity that could be, that you could be putting forward or people could be perceiving of you. I'm not saying Aries to sit here and kowtow to people, to play to people's emotions, to really try and preserve anything, you know, that doesn't serve you but i also just want to caution you against i just heard being overly dramatic okay or being overly assertive again there's just this really ten of swords there's just this really strong feeling that something has got to end and i am going to make that happen now at the bottom of the deck here so far, Aries, you do have the King of Cups, Scorpio energy, okay? Mars was just in Scorpio. Now, some of you are, interestingly enough, what I'm feeling from this King of Cups here is that some of you may actually be fairly emotionally detached. That doesn't mean that you're unfeeling, um, but the King of Cups is a master of his emotions and can, it, it, it's kind of a, a master of emotional detachment, okay? Even though he is the king of emotion, right? The king to the queen of emotion, okay, and watery stuff and all that. It, it, he still has the ability to detach himself. And that's where we get the energies of strong emotional maturity from the King of Cups. And also with that strong emotional maturity, the ability to do what you know it is you need to do, need to do, do what it is you know is right, even if it's not easy. And there's definitely, this is definitely not easy, Scor uh, not Scorpio, Aries, but at the same time, you know it is you need to do it. And I feel like you're extremely determined to do it, okay? Just don't go steamrolling over people, that's all. Do what you have to do, but also hold a level of compassion. This King of Cups may be emotionally detached, but he's still compassionate, <laughs> right? Okay, now, this could activate a connection with or an awareness of a higher purpose and or goal. That's that Sagittarius energy. That is that is Venus moving retrograde through your ninth house, which is ruled by Sagittarius in Sagittarius, okay? So there's that, that potential for the higher awareness. And this could be fully activated by the time Venus, Mars, and Pluto hit their final point of conjunction in the third on the 3rd of March, which is also going to be in your ninth house, okay? So career-wise, I, I, I do, I want to put a pin in this Ten of Swords. I want to get more on that. But career-wise for you, Sagittarius, not Sagittarius, Aries, for career-wise, you may really be starting to connect to a higher purpose, the deep, deep depths of your in, in your soul. There could be something that you are guided to do, needed to do uh, in terms of like, say your mission work, if you resonate with something like that, or um, just your career focus in general, that um, it feels like you've been avoiding 
Four of Cups. And it's interesting, over on Patreon, I did a reading a few days ago that was titled uh, Take a Deep Breath. But there seems to be, and I'm, I actually think I want to bring this reading, this message to the YouTube collective here. But it seems like there is some sort of fear that's going on for some of us in the collective. There is something about you or about your desires and how you want to show up or how you want to be of service to the world and to the community, to the society, to the collective that seems to be weird and that your spirit, that your soul has been guiding you towards accepting and taking up, but it seems weird or it's somewhat unacceptable by the people around you. And it feels like you may have been avoiding that. But this month, I, and that's what I'm hearing is the topic of contention. At this point this month, if this is resonating with you, some of you may actually be like, you know what? Screw it. I am tired of not doing this any longer. I'm just going to go for it. And I don't give a flying F what, who, what, what, whoever thinks of me. Quite frankly, uh, sorry, Aries, quite frankly, Aries, I feel like this is a good thing. And I just heard this is a good thing. The only thing you have to just keep a lid on is your temper, okay? Especially if this is something you've been bottling up for so long. Instead of taking that energy, that angry energy, and using it to lash out at people, I would recommend taking all of that anger, maybe even all that resentment, I did just hear that, and channeling it into creating or doing what it is you're being called to do, okay? That's a good use of that energy. You do have the devil now. All right, so, um, and then you have the nine of pentacles. <sighs> okay, so it absolutely was toxicity, codependency. Uh, the devil does represent Capricorn energy. Capricorn is the ruler of the 10th house. So there is that energy of the way people perceive of you. And it absolutely was a detrimental attachment. Now, Aries, I will say that, you know, if this part is resonating with you, there is, there is absolutely a method to the madness. I don't want you to beat yourself up for taking so long to disconnect from that which was holding you back because that was absolutely a part of this whole process. You needed to go through that. Okay, you needed to experience what it would have been like should you not follow what your heart or your soul was guiding you towards so that you could really learn or gain or the understanding of what that truly means for you and how fulfilling that could potentially be because what you were doing or what you were an, an association with or alignment with is not fulfilling. But you needed to give your ego that grace to at least find out first, right? Okay, in the grand scheme of things, let's look at it in a positive light and we'll look at it that way, yeah. Yeah, so 10 of swords, four of cups and the devil. It was the devil, it was these, it was these attachments. It would, may even have been societal conditioning with this devil energy, which is associated with the 10th house. It may have been a level of societal conditioning that was keeping you in this alignment and keeping you from moving forward towards what it is you wanna do. And at this point, some of you may actually end up being demonized by those people around you that you were so afraid of defying or not being in alignment with. And the main reason why you may end up being demonized or I just heard assaulted. I hope you're not physically assaulted, but maybe verbally, verbally, emotionally, mentally accosted or assaulted. You may actually deal with that, but that is because at this point you are asserting your sense of independence. Nine of pentacles is the overall energy at the bottom of the deck with the knight of cups underneath that. Okay, you're following your heart this time, truly following your heart this time, if you really allow yourself to do this or move in this direction. And that's going to leave some people out in the cold. But this was the whole reason why you were attached to that to begin with. Misery loves company, Aries. Don't give in to that anymore. I mean, I felt like I needed to say that to you, but at the same time, I feel like I don't need to say that to you because you don't want to give in to it any longer, okay? All right, um, Spirit is wanting me to pull a little bit more on this devil energy. Let me move, I read all of that. Yes, yes, I did. All right, let me move this out of the way. 
Um, I'm still talking to Aries rising here. We are going to move to the general, to the more general energies in a moment, but I'm wanting to talk a little bit more about this devil. The 10 of pentacles. Yes, yes, <laughs> yes. This is that 10th house energy, 10 of pentacles. Okay, 10th house, Capricorn, the devil, 10th house. This uh, And yes, this for many of you, uh, or at least what I'm picking up on now, Aries, is that this is a career thing finances thing some of you could be coming out of um ancestral karma in terms of lack of finances or lack of abundance all right anything else for the devil here the three of wands in reverse yes this is your confirmation aries that whatever you were pursuing under the guise of this 10th house energy or for your career or in ways or how what you were how you were moving to preserve a level of uh, an image within the collective or within society, that's a no-go any longer. Three of Wands in reverse. There is no future for you there anymore. There never really was a future for you, future for you there. At least the future that was there for you has been achieved already because you have you are starting to gain the understanding that this is not for you. There is something else that I need to be doing here. Could there be more? Yes, Aries, there can be more. There is more. Right? Three of Wands in reverse, not the path for you any longer. And it's not even like I'm saying that, Aries, to like to tell you that. I think you know that at this point. Like there's sufficient understanding right now. Okay. All right. I'm gonna close out this part of the reading um, with the Oracle of the Seven Energies. And then we're gonna move forward into more of a general thing. Yeah. So to close out this part of the reading for my Aries rising, last shuffle all right for aries rising here closing closing message you have a merry motive and the storyteller aries you have a story to tell and that story is told through the process of your life Part of that story is the orientation that you were in in the past that you are now transforming out of and transforming into a new one. And this is also this is also wrapped up in the, the Sagittarian ninth house energy that is represented here for you, um, that is heavily affected here for you because Sagittarius is the storyteller. Sagittarius is the light worker. Sagittarius is the one that gets up on the soapbox and preaches sometimes. Um, so this career change for some of you could involve you being some sort of author, a writer. Maybe you want to start writing a book. Maybe you want to write a book or tell the story of this specific transformation for you. All right. But also with that, you have a merry motive. So Again, there is a method to the madness, all right? Um, this is actually a good thing. This direction that you're moving in, there is a real reason for it, but it's also a really good thing to be moving in this direction, Aries. This is you getting into a direct alignment with your soul, or at least a greater alignment with your soul and really following through with what your soul wants to accomplish here. And that, that is, I'm hearing Aries, that is a direct affront to some of the people that you've been associating with or some of the organizations that you've been associating with. But that's okay. To each their own, right? There is a method to the madness. So I really wanna encourage you to allow yourself to really follow through with this, okay? Okay. Let me pause for a second and reset, and then we are going to get into more of a general energy reading for the month. Yeah? Just a moment. Alrighty, guys. Welcome. So for those of you that skipped the first half of the reading where we were talking to Aries Rising, hello. Welcome. So this is going to be just a general energy pull for the sign of Aries. This is not necessarily uh, associated with any specific system or uh, astrological practice or discipline. Um, so you don't necessarily have to resonate with or be in alignment with Aries, uh, with the sidereal system 
in order for this to resonate for you. This is going to be for Aries, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus, whatever Aries placement you have, blah, 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 whatnot, whatever. Um, also keep in mind, as always, this is a general reading and we could be talking to a cross watcher here, yes? So let's get into just some general energies for the month of January, 2021. I'm gonna start with the energy Oracle deck. Five shuffles here, one. What messages do we have for the sign of Aries for January of 2022? This is two. Aries, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. Maybe even the Cross Watcher. That was three. Whoops. Okay, we have something already. Angel of Strength. Okay. Last one. Last shuffle here. Yeah. So the message for Aries, one of the messages for Aries this month is to really pull on your personal power, your personal strength, regardless as to whether you are Aries rising or not in the sidereal, sidereal, sidereal system. The fact that uh, whatever transit Mars is making, of course, in the sidereal system, it's from through Scorpio into Ophiuchus this month. Uh, there is a sense of personal power that you're being infused with that you're being asked to call upon to draw upon okay again aries be careful of your ego this month with the conjunction between the sun and pluto also with mercury going retrograde uh, topics of contention don't let your temper get the best of you right yeah as i say that the angel of balance comes in definitely remember to balance your ego with your soul's intention okay and also definitely try and remember to take any sort of anger resentment maybe even fear and there's there's a little bit there's a little bit of fear in there for some of you okay but you can transmute all of that all right so instead of using that energy to pop off or to lash out at people this month i highly recommend the guidance here is to work on transmuting that and directing that energy that power into the changes you want to make for your life so that you can be in greater alignment with yourself or what your soul is call calling you to do okay all right other messages what else for aries yeah all right here we go okay overall energy now is financial constraints this is kind of a five of pentacles energy we did talk about that a little bit with my aries rising um some of the associations that you've had the situations you've been dealing with whether that's business financial or whether it's with other people interpersonally that's coming into direct focus for you this month and you're going to have an opportunity you do have an opportunity to change it all right but with this what's come out here is woman holding a coin and the world and this came out for i think it came out for scorpio so again it, it uh i i mentioned this while talking to aries rising but you might want to watch the scorpio reading I kind of want to suggest that everybody watch the Scorpio reading because that gives you a view. Even if you are, if even if you don't resonate with Aries, or I'm sorry, Scorpio energy, or you don't really have any Scorpio placements, what I explained in that Scorpio reading really gives us an idea of the amount of power that is available to us this month. Okay, so um, on top of all that, I, I lost where I was going there, but on, on top of all that. Um, we do have v oh that's what i was saying we do have venus going retrograde obviously venus is retrograde at, as, as, at this moment and this came out i think it came out for scorpio but woman holding a coin here is representing venus and is representing what venus is influencing in terms of the changes or the endings the completions that you could bring to your life the world here in association with your values whether that be financial morally um, and also your alignment with certain interpersonal and or romantic relationships. With that said, with that said, I want to move into some romance talk. Uh, we're going to, we're going to start with the energy. I'm sorry. The lover's Oracle here. Yeah. Five shuffles. One. So in terms of Venus's retrograde movement right now for you, for Aries rising, it's in Sagittarius. Well, for everybody, it's in Sagittarius. But for Aries rising, it's in your ninth house, okay? But 
this is two. So, it, but anyway, regardless to that, um, this is three. What messages do we have from Venus through her retrograde motion for Aries at this time? This is four. Aries, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus, whatnot, whatever. Yeah, especially if you, if, if in your natal chart, you have Venus and Aries, again, all right, this is... This could be, this is a really powerful time for you. And I feel like it kind of actually has really been a super powerful time for you. Uh, Aries, uh, Venus and Aries individuals. Um, mainly because of what's going on with Uranus. Uranus going retrograde or just station or it transiting through air, through Aries, right? Uh, where regardless as to wherever you find that in your chart, obviously for Aries rising, that's happening in your first house. But um, this is five. All right, so Venus's transit is probably a super transformative time for you, especially for my Aries Venuses, okay? But what message does Venus have for you at this time? What changes, what expansion, what um, completions are coming through? What's happening in terms of Venus for you, Aries? What's happening in terms of Venus for you right now? Okay, yeah. Yeah, look at this. Okay, the first card out, Aries, is paradise. Happiness, expansion, that's what we, what we were just saying. Joy, playfulness, oneness, enjoying each other. So Venus's retrograde right now is giving you the opportunity to find paradise, to really focus on what paradise is for you and to align with that. And then you'll really have an opportunity to to, to blast off, to launch towards that reality once your ruling planet of Mars links up with Venus and then finally makes that final conjunction with Pluto on the 3rd of March, okay? Uh, so you really have an opportunity to align with that form of paradise for yourself. And for some of you, that uh, this takes me back to that 10th house energy that is so, that is such a focal point for my Aries rising. I mean, Regardless as to what everybody else says about it, if if it doesn't hold value to you or it isn't bringing you that level of satisfaction and contentment, then you don't have to align with it. Okay. You have you also have here with this woman holding a coin and Venus energy. You have keys on a ring and a hand of cards. Um, keys on a ring says many options, decision, unconventional. Yeah. String along, one night stand, okay. But also hand of cards here, take a chance, risk, be strategic, options, not showing your hand and gambling. But I kind of feel like some of you have not been showing your hand for a while. And uh, romantically speaking, this could be somebody that has been keeping their options open, wanting to dabble a little bit is what I'm hearing. Um, and maybe throughout that, Aries, you have been able to identify or come to a greater understanding of what it is you truly want out of a relationship, what it is you truly want out of uh, romance. Let's go a little deeper into that with some tarot here. All right, the world here, I also wanna say the world in this deck, which is the Energy Oracle deck, the world represents travel, expansion. This is a very Sagittarian energy here for you, okay? Sagittarius has a big focus for us for this, for the winter season, really, but I mean, Aries, for all the reasons that I've already described, Venus moving through Sagittarius, Sagittarius, and that happening in your ninth house, which is the house of Sagittarius, which is the house of expansion and travel. I mean, some of you really could actually be physically traveling a lot or making plans to travel a lot, but it doesn't have to be physical. This could be philosophically. This could be um, uh, mentally, emotionally, right? Expanding your horizons. So while the world here would represent uh, a level of closures or completing cycles, it also represents traveling, traveling the world, seeing new places, whether that's, again, physical or spiritual or energetic, okay? Two more shuffles, that's one. And this is two. Could there be more, Aries? Yes. There is, in fact, more. Let's find it. All right, so what do we want to say here, Spirit? For my Aries, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus, and or Crosswatchers. 
Page of Wands. Aries is the very first card out. Okay, this is changing your point of view. This is changing your narrative. This is changing your alignment. Some of you may be going through what you would consider or what other people around you. I feel it's mostly other people around you, but some sort of midlife crisis. If you're a man or a woman of a certain age, there could be some people around you, maybe some people that have been or are closest to you that look at you and say, you're too old for all this. Like you're not a teenager anymore. I'm pretty sure you left your twenties a long time ago. Why are you acting like a child now? It's not that you're acting like a child. You may have connected with a, a sense of childlike wonder. You may, this, this all may, could be an effect of you having done an extensive amount of healing in terms of your inner child. And now because you have that greater connection, you have that connection with wonder, excitement, travel, fun, exploration, trying new things. Okay, a childlike sense of wonder. Don't let anybody take that away from you, Aries. Some of you may get really defensive in trying to fight others. Don't focus on that. Don't, you might get defensive in trying to fight others against or fight for your right. Fight for your right to party. Okay. But defending your inner child, don't focus on that. You have the two of swords here now. Focus solely on what it is you intend to create. The new direction, the new passion project, the new alignment, whatever. Focus solely on that. The two of swords is saying to you, again, take that anger that resentment, maybe even that little bit of fear and transmute it and put it directly into the new that you wish to create now, okay? What else for Aries? Now we have the Six of Pentacles because especially with this 10th house energy, if that's, if that's resonating for you, what it is you're moving forward towards is greater reciprocity or contains greater reciprocity, maybe even uh, greater financial value more finances, more reward for the work that you're putting in. And okay, for those of you that resonate with this on a career level, the universe is guiding you to do this because this is where your abundance lies. This is where the true reciprocity, the true flow is going to come through for you. If you have been experiencing a level of um, lack, like doing a bunch of work and getting barely anything for it. You're in the wrong place, quite frankly. To, to, to boil it down a bit, you're in the wrong place. And the universe is telling you that. The universe is trying to guide you to where you are naturally meant to be so that greater reciprocity and greater return for what it is you're putting out there can be achieved, okay? This is not a place of stuck or stagnant or blocked energy. This is a place of flow. And yes, you are going to have to assert yourself and you are going to have to change some things and hold some new boundaries in order for you to get there, but your heart is guiding you there, Knight of Cups. So trust it, follow your heart, listen to your heart, yeah? I'm being called to go to the Romance Angels deck now. And then I want to close this out, but I think I'm going to close it out. I can't tell if I want to close it out with the unicorns or with the Oracle of the Seven Energies, but we'll get there. What messages do we have for Aries right now for the month of January from the Romance Angels deck spirit? What do you want to say to Aries from the Romance Angels deck? Now, I know there are a lot of romantic type of uh, messages kind of woven and weaved into this, but really, even though we're kind of talking about a little bit of, of romantic energies here that doesn't have to necessarily translate into you finding a significant other or this translating into the a relationship you currently have. These romantic energies are also part of how you care for and you nurture yourself and how you associate with yourself. So even if you're not interested in the real romantic situation, you do need to work on cultivating unconditional love for yourself because that will help you set the record straight right in relation to the people or the outside world around you oh one more shuffle all right last shuffle and then we're going to get into this for aries here from the romance angels so what messages do you have for angel for aries please spirit from this deck what do you want aries to know at this time 
Yeah, look at this. First card is children. Yeah, this is definitely connected to your inner child. And then you have express your love. All right, so take this, take it as it resonates, guys. Either this has to do with your inner child and defending your inner child and expressing your love for yourself by honoring what your inner child is guiding you towards, or um, this is romantic and you're being asked, you have a connection with someone and your inner child is like, yes, this is my person or this is someone that I wanna pursue, let's talk about it. Express your love, whether this is romantically or just for yourself, okay? Express your love and expressing your love looks at looks like doing what it is your heart and your soul is guiding you to do, yes? Last messages for Aries, anything else? Take this one right here. <laughs> Perfect. And this is where we connect to more than just romance free yourself because Aries that's what we've been talking about for damn near an hour now right freeing yourself from that which is confining and allowing your heart to guide you the knight of cups judgment because it's time underneath judgment is the queen of cups okay understanding your emotions what it is you truly feel how it is you truly feel about it and what it is you want to doing what it is you want to do about it all right we're gonna get a closing message from the oracle of the seven energies yes Gonna give this one shuffle for all right generally speaking to close out this reading for my aries sun moon rising venus and or cross watchers for the month of january yep okay excellent see look at this at the bottom of the deck you have a card that would be the depiction of the ace of cups in the tarot which is unconditional love self-love right? Filling up your cup first so that you can then turn around and work to help filling up the cup of others. Card number four, great and full. Now that also translates to being grateful, but great and full. Your cup runneth over, or at least you have a chance to start really allowing that cup to fill up. And you do that by honoring yourself and healing your heart and going towards what it is your heart is truly guiding you towards. I know it may not necessarily seem like it right now or seem this way right now, but um, you have to cut away certain ties in order for you to be of greater service or to be greater, more fulfilled. And be difficult at first. It's gonna create a lot of tension, maybe a lot of fights and arguments. All right, but it's not worth invest. It's not worth investing in that end of it. What's worth investing in is filling your heart, healing your heart. All right. So, however that looks for you now on the surface, just trust and believe that your heart is leading you in the right direction. Okay. Woo. All right, guys, I'm going to leave it there. Aries, this one is the longest so far, almost an hour long, but hey, whatever. Um, I love you guys. Thank you so much for tuning in. I hope this was helpful for you. Again, if you would like to get a personal reading with me, I am available with that. For that, all the information can be in the description box below. Whether you just want a general energy reading or you want me to uh, pull in some of the sidereal astrology in there, I am absolutely available for all of it. So send me an email. Um, check me out over on Patreon if you want to support the channel, help keep this channel going, join the family, get some extra content from me throughout the month. Check me out on Patreon, patreon.com slash divine conversations. All of that can be found in the description box below. If you're new here, please consider subscribing. Smash that like button for me. Leave me a comment in the comment section down below. I love hearing from you guys. But with that said, I hope you have a fantastic month and I look forward to connecting with you again for our next reading for the month of February. Yes? Excellent. Take care. Bye. <laughs>